Hey everyone, welcome to the Maria Fontana Show. I hope you guys are all doing amazing. So today I have a special treat for you. I am totally going behind the scenes and I'm going to talk about something that I get asked about quite a lot. And guess what? It has nothing to do with business and it has everything to do with real life, about love, relationships. So again, this is a topic I really don't share much, but I have so much experience in my own personal story. So I thought it would be really awesome for my viewers, for my um, listeners, for me to share. And because I do get so many questions about this in my inbox. So I wanted to be transparent and I wanted to really share some things that I think are really important in life. So let's go back. I'm going to take you back now to 1983. It's a beautiful sunny day in southern Italy and... There's this cute guy, I'm I'm there on vacation with my family, I'm 15 years old, and there's this cute guy with these beautiful piercing blue eyes playing a guitar on the boardwalk. So it's like called the Via Marina, it is, you know, where everyone strolls and takes their evening walks, but you're literally on the beach, so it's so beautiful. I know this young guy sitting there playing the guitar, and I'm with all my cousins, and we're, we're just all hanging out, and you know, being together and having a good old time and singing and dancing. And I don't know, I think we were eating watermelon or ice cream. I don't even remember now, but it was it was such a great time, such good vibes, good energy, right? And um, I spent my summers in Italy <clears throat> always as a, a young woman, as a kid. I actually spent my summers in Italy my whole life. So this is when I met my first love, my Giuseppe, my Giuseppe Germinata. And um we, we really fell in love, as corny as it sounds. It was like really love at first sight. And we had like an amazing, like typical, like, you know, summer love, like from Greece. We were just so in love with each other. We just had such a great time and we connected and, and we just weren't inseparable. So, you know, you have to turn back the time now to that time. There was no internet. There was no iPhones. There was no cell phones. So when I left to come back to America at the end of the summer, Basically, you know, it was all about writing a letter. And even then it was expensive. I had to, you know, buy a special envelope. He had to buy a special envelope, an airmail um, stamp. It would take like a month for the letters to get back and forth. So we did this for about a year, uh, maybe even less than a year. And then in that spring, I had gone back and um, that Easter, I saw him because my uncle got married. So we went back to Italy and everything was wonderful. So then, you know, there was a small pause because, you know, by (laughs) things that were out of our control, we were both young and um, it was just hard to stay connected. We lost sight of each other. You know, he went to the military and we kind of disconnected. A few years later, we saw each other and um, basically what happened was he thought I didn't want him anymore. I thought he didn't want me anymore. You know, some family members got involved. Like, again, you have to go back to the times. It was a different time. You know, even your landline to call Italy was expensive. And it was such a different element. Anyway, guys, fast forward. He married someone in Italy. I married someone in the United States. And we were both miserably married and unhappy. He got divorced. I got divorced. Now, mind you, we both had children with other people. And, um, you know, we both always had a profound love for each other. That love, that connection, that soul connection never left. You know, again, I would spend my summers there. I'd go back and forth. We would see each other at a distance, but due to respect that we were both married, we we never, we just never crossed that boundary, basically. And once he got divorced and then I got divorced, um, we reconnected. And the beautiful part is the first time I went to see him, he sent me a ticket to go to Italy for a weekend. And it was very um, out of character for me. You know, that wasn't my normal behavior to do risky things. I I said yes, and I went. And I just knew, my soul knew, my intuition knew that it was safe and it was okay. Well, we had the best friggin' four days in Rome that I, it was the most fabulous experience of my entire life, I'm going to say other than the day I met him. And we started this like literally like a whirlwind romance. Like the second I saw him when those airport doors opened and I came out of um, customs, like I buckled at the knees and 
he literally filled with tears. And when we saw each other, even though it had been 30 some odd years, it was like time stood still. Nothing had ever changed for us. And everything was understood without speaking. So it was the most profound experience I've ever had. So this takes me to, you know, there's so many nuances in between this. You know, you have to realize I, many years ago, I started after my daughter was born, I started an intense journey of personal development, an intense journey of healing and wound healing and therapy and mindset work, profound personal development work with which was things I had to do and process and get through to be able to be the person I was to accept that type of love into my life. So I hear a lot of entrepreneurs and business women and a lot of women around me who are like, I just can't find love. I meet all these weirdos. I'm not attracting the partner of my life. Now, this is men and women that I work with that, that, that say the same thing to me. And even though we're working on business, They ask me all the time, they're like, well, how do you have this relationship with your husband? You guys are like two kids. You guys are so in love. So this is why I'm doing this podcast episode, because I think it's important for people to realize that this is a journey. So my opinion is this, and my findings personally, I did so much work on myself, so much. I committed to a deep journey of personal development and healing And when I finally got to a place where I loved myself enough, 150%, that there was just no wavering. It was an unwavering love for myself. My Giuseppe fell into my life. And you can't make this shit up. Because guys, if you're looking for someone to fill a void within you, that's not true love. That's not a real companion. A true love partner, which is what I have, is we're best friends. We tell each other everything. We have a mutual respect. There's trust. There's no like, yeah, do we like, does he get on my nerves? Do I get on his nerves? Of course, because we're human. But it's an egoless relationship. Like it's about really dedicating 150% to each other. You, you, You drop the whole ego thing. So what does this have to do with business and life? So let me just go back to the story. So Giuseppe and I, we dated now for like, we dated for a few years um, because Giuseppe lived in Italy. It was, you know, it was a little complicated. You know, we had to do the long distance thing back and forth. So basically then we decided to get married and um, we still have a pretty interesting life. We have a home in Italy. We travel back and forth quite often. Um and and we honestly have created a life that works for us. It's not a fake life. It's not a hoity-toity life. It's not a life like, you know, that that you you post on Instagram or on Facebook to make people jealous. It is a profound commitment to what makes us happy. And it's simple. And this is where I think a lot of people get it wrong. That A, number one, you got to do the work on yourself first. You got to love yourself enough to then be able to attract and hold space for the person who is your equal and who's going to love you equally as much as you love yourself. And second, it's not about all the ego stuff and the fake facade. It's about true soul connection. And when you shift your mindset and the way you think and the beliefs you have to forgetting about all the fake stuff and focus on what really matters, that's, I think, when true love can enter your life and a partner that truly has your best interest at heart because it is an unwavering commitment to each other, no matter what the hell's going on, right? Like, my husband loves my family, respects my family. Like, no matter what, we have commitment to each other totally. So in the journey that after we got married and, you know, we're we're living our life, you know, there's always challenges. Nothing's perfect. You have to overcome hurdles, life. You know, we both have children from other marriages. We both have exes. But this is all a choice to make it be with flow or to have a life with chaos. Since we choose a life without chaos, we have flow. 
And every single minute of the day, no matter where you are in your life, you can choose chaos or you can choose flow. It's up to you. You're driving. You're driving the plane. This is your freaking life. So in the world of entrepreneurship and business, it's the same thing. I can step into an energy of chaos and forcing things to work and forcing shit to want to go the way I want. Or I can sit back and analyze and say, where is this my ego? And where am I not showing up just relaxed and in flow? Because the minute you're in flow, the right people come to your business. Now, I'm not saying you don't have to do the work. Of course you have to do the work. Business is the same thing. In a relationship, you got to do the inner work and do the personal development. In business, you have to not only do the personal development, but you got to do the strategy work too. So you have to show up and do shit. But when there's flow and your energy is aligned, things fall together with much more ease. You attract clients who are perfectly aligned for your business, regardless if you own a salon or you're a coach or you're a consultant or you're a doctor, holistic practice, whatever you're doing, wherever you are, or if you're not even a business owner and you simply are a professional, the flow will come better. But if you're not investing in yourself, in your personal growth, your healing, doing the work, answering those tough ass questions, looking in the mirror and being like, you know what? Where do I need to work on shit? Where do I need to drop my fucking ego? Where do I need to change relationships or start saying no or create better boundaries? Because again, guys, we create our outcomes. We create what happens to us if we like it or not. So I hope this answered some of your questions. Um, I love when you guys send me questions in my inbox or email me. I'm always happy to talk about topics about the real world and entrepreneurship and business and and relationships too, because having good relationships comes from working on our inner game. Our inner game is like the athlete working out to get to the Olympics. If you don't work on your inner game, you're not going to win. And winning looks different for everyone and working out looks different for everyone, right? So you have to think about what type of working out do you need to to get to where you need for your inner game. And don't compare yourself or bullshit to anyone else. Don't fucking look at what other people are doing. Focus by looking in. Look in. Close your eyes. Tap into your gut. Tap into your soul. And ask your soul, what do I need today? And I can promise you, That's always going to be the right answer. So here's sending you guys lots of love and light. If I've served you or made you feel upbeat today, please leave me a precious review. I am always grateful. If you'd like to connect with me, work on your business, feel free to book a free consultation. Here's sending you lots of love and light, guys. Talk to you soon.